It really makes me mad when I talk to students a week before their official LSAT test date who still don't know the difference between necessary assumptions and sufficient assumptions in LSAT logical reasoning. My goal is to help you avoid making that mistake. Hey, what's up everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to help you differentiate between two common types of LSAT logical reasoning questions, necessary assumption and sufficient assumption. Although they both contain the word assumption in the question stem, they are asking for very different things. Let's break it down. Necessary assumption questions use keywords like depends upon and requires and assumes in the question stem. In contrast, Sufficient assumption questions use words like allows, enables, phrases like follows logically if assumed, and properly inferred if assumed. What this means is that there is no such thing as assumption questions. Strike that phrase from your vocabulary entirely. There are only necessary assumption questions and sufficient assumption questions. Again, the key words in the question stem help you differentiate them because they're using words and phrases that are synonymous with either necessity or sufficiency. Again, depends upon, requires, and assumes, all synonymous with necessity, and allows, enables, follows logically if assumed, and properly inferred if assumed, all synonymous with sufficiency. So again, these two question types are asking for very different things. A lot of folks in the LSAT prep world will disagree with me on this, but I believe that necessary assumption questions are best viewed as a very specific kind of must-be-true question. This is because if you take the stimulus as given, if you take the argument as given, then you are logically committed to agreeing with all underlying necessary assumptions. In contrast, sufficient assumption questions open the door to new information. It doesn't matter how strong the answer choice is as long as it gets the job done. I'll give you an example. If you want to buy a $1 item, if you did buy a $1 item, then that means you possessed the value of at least one penny in buying that $1 item. A penny is not sufficient to buy a $1 item, but you must possess the value of at least one penny in order to buy a $1 item, so a penny is like our necessary. In contrast, having a million dollars would be sufficient to allow you to buy a one dollar item you don't need to have a million dollars but a million dollars will get the job done and then of course there's the question what if you had exactly one dollar having exactly one dollar is both necessary to buy a one dollar item and is also sufficient to buy a one dollar item what this means is that if you mistake one question type for another you might occasionally get lucky because in my $1 example, it's both necessary and sufficient. If you misunderstood the question stem and the answer was $1, you'd still get it right. But in the vast majority of cases, the necessary assumption is only a necessary assumption and the sufficient assumption is only a sufficient assumption. And in fact, LSAC is very sneaky about including tempting wrong answers before you ever get to the correct answer choice. So in the famous rattlesnake folktale question in prep test 30, one of the first answer choices is a sufficient assumption and the correct answer is a necessary assumption and appears much later in the answer choices. I won't assign actual letters here because I don't want to spoil anything for those of you who haven't done this question yet. Look it up. It's an incredibly difficult question, but it illustrates this point about necessary versus sufficient. Sufficient being really tempting because we like strong language. Folks tend to gravitate towards strong language. And in sufficient assumption questions, that is totally fine. We don't care how strong the choice is as long as it gets the job done. But in contrast, for necessary assumption questions, we want to gravitate towards more moderate language because more moderate language is more likely to have been required by the stimulus than more extreme language would be. If you find it helpful, you could think about sufficient assumption questions like being super strengtheners because we don't care how strong they are as long as they get the job done. Of course, having $1 million would be overkill to buy a $1 item, but it will achieve that objective. In contrast, for necessary assumption questions, 
we want to gravitate towards moderate language. Moderate is totally fine. Obvious is totally fine. A lot of students will actually tend to dislike necessary assumption answer choices because they seem too moderate, too obvious, not strong enough. But that is not the proper perspective from which to view this question type. We like moderate, we like obvious, because after all, like I said, this is best viewed as being a very specific kind of must-be-true question. Inferences seem obvious when you already have the given information because they are not really telling you anything that you did not already know. I'm highlighting the difference here between these two question types because they are both guaranteed to show up on your LSAT exam. Necessary assumption questions especially are quite common. They are one of the most common LSAT question types. Make sure that you understand this distinction before you go in there and take the LSAT for real. If you would like my help in preparing for the LSAT, there are a number of ways I could support you, whether it's through my live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. And if you found the video helpful, please do me a favor, like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps with that YouTube algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best, and take care.